Thanks for watching this video. Like and subscribe, hit the notification bell. This is my video about my ground air heat transfer system for my Wallapini here in Zone A in Wisconsin. I know that a lot of people are interested in the GAT systems and uh, I was one of those persons so I decided to put one in when we were putting in an addition. And uh, here is the very beginning. The concrete walls are up and the excavator is coming in and uh, digging it down for me. It's going to go down, well he'll dig it down about three feet, but the um, the tubes ultimately will be about four feet below ground level. He uh, helped me out by putting in the gravel for me. I have to say he did a mighty fine job spreading it out for me. Saved me a bunch of time and labor that I didn't have to do. You gotta admit that's a pretty good job there. And that is clay there, not the, the greatest of soil. I will be putting topsoil um, on top of uh, the clay when I'm done. It's really fun to watch, right? Okay, so now the, uh, the first circuit is down. Uh, you've got six inch feeder pipes and uh, they come in come down into some uh, Y fixtures that are four inch as I recall. That is the intake pipe there. Eventually it's going to go right up to the very top of the Wallapini, um, almost 16 feet up, maybe 15. And the other end there was the, the out um, take as it were. Blows the air out the other side. And I had to make sure that I had my Y's positioned so that they would be conducive to the airflow. I'm just going to kind of let you look at it. I have some still photos coming here. I don't think I really needed the socks, uh, but I went with it. All right, so here's uh, one of the still photos. You can take a look at it. Eventually the dirt's gonna be up to um, above the apron. So maybe about four foot down on this circuit. So this is, they also call this like an earth battery. I don't know, there's some geothermal benefits to it. I'm sure that the ground heats it up pretty well. Um, not as well as if it was deeper and uh, uh, spread out a little bit more. This is another close up. That smaller pipe that you see is just a drain pipe that ties into uh, the drain pipe for the addition itself. Um, I've used it a couple times when draining my water feature. It's not attached to the ground air heat transfer system though. So I had a bunch of pipe left over, so I decided to put in another circuit. I wasn't able to do it, I didn't have enough to do it the same way, so this time I went lengthwise. You can see I've only got four runs there. Um, I think it's um, behaved just as well as the uh, the lower circuit. I think theoretically it shouldn't, but uh, the temperatures coming out of both of the pipes, as we'll see, are pretty close together. So. Um, I, I think both of them are working pretty well. And this one's only like two feet down, two and a half feet. It's not as deep as the other one. Maybe it's not picking up the same uh, thermal, geothermal um, as the lower one, but uh, I think it's still uh, doing pretty well. So now let's uh, give you a picture of what it looks like after I've covered everything off, covered everything up. So I, I do have sloped a little bit to make sure that any flooding in there actually goes out of the wallopini. And I will be making the wall um, myself on the, the west side that you that see there. I did it that way so that I can get the tractor in and out. 
So now the contractors are there to uh, put on the roof. We've got the polycarbonate panels there ready for them. And you can see the, uh, the six inch lines laying there ready to go up. So I think the, the nice thing about the way that I did this is because the excavator was already there, because the concrete people were already there, because the contractors were already there, it probably only cost me about five grand. Um, now there were other things, I had to buy the fans, you know, different things, but I was able to do it fairly cheaply is what I think. So this is one of the rare looks, uh, probably the only video that I have um, before I really done much inside. I used those blue barrels to help hold the dirt in so that it didn't buckle my raised beds. I wanted to have uh, lots of topsoil for the roots to go right down. So there you go. So now we're going to go inside. Uh, the previous videos were all from about 18 months ago. Uh, this is the second winter and here you see that the temperatures at the top of the Wallapini are 52 and 53 degrees. And the fan set on high for each of them. And uh, each fan is using about 31 watts, which I think is pretty good. I pay attention to the, the energy usage um, pretty closely because I need to know if it makes more sense to heat it with electricity, whether it's through a through the GAT system or through an a electric heater I have or the kerosene heater. So that's why I have all these different ways of measuring the temperature and um, how much electricity I'm using. So up at the very top, the air is coming in. It's being blown down through the fans that are spliced in the middle there. I use that to uh, make sure the temperature stays no lower than a, about, I think I have it set for 47. And I use that fan there to circulate the air across the Wallapini so that warm air doesn't just heat up one part of the Wallapini or go up. See that insulation there and make sure that it doesn't just leak, leak out. It's going to go up. The hot air from that kerosene heater is going to go up, down into the pipes and get stored into the earth. But I wanted some of it blown across. So as I'm filming this uh, today, it's 46 degrees inside at the edge and 13 outside. At the coldest day, I have other videos, some of the colder days, Wallapini held up pretty well. And I have uh, thermosets on both here. On the left, you see 51, and that is 50 degrees. So that is not much difference between the uh, the two pipes coming out. Um, pretty happy with it. And that pepper plant is doing better than the other ones, and it might have something to do with getting steady 50 degree temperature. So um, let me just sort of cap it off here. I think the system has really worked out well. Um, I was able to do it, I think, fairly cheap. Um, still learning a lot about what's going to work and what won't work. Um, I have uh, coffee plants in there, which sort of forces me to keep it heated. I could do um, pretty well without heating it for certain things like the citrus, um, but there it is. If I had to do it over again, I might make it a little bit more narrower and raise up the walls to use the sides to sort of heat a little bit more. So anyway, um, let me conclude this. Please put questions or comments um, and to let me know if you want me to do future videos. Let me introduce you to my dog. It's the dumbest dog in the world. If you've got a dumber one, I feel really badly for you.